guys, welcome to Smart Talk Wrestling Reviews. I am your host, Boise, and this is our Raw review. The aftermath of Hell in a Cell. So let's get on with it. Hit the music. So we kicked off the show with the big dog, the man himself, Roman Reigns. And he is not happy after what, what happened at Hell in a Cell. Uh, where Brock Lesnar came in, destroyed him and Braun, Le Braun Strowman and walked away. Um, obviously, the big dog himself, I keep saying the big dog himself, the big dog, Roman Reigns, came out to challenge Brock Lesnar. And of course, Brock Lesnar's not there, but he challenged him nonetheless after what he did. Braun Strowman interrupts him, saying... I'm sick and tired of this. I want another opportunity. This is not fair. Which is understandable. I can understand where Braun is coming from. You know, he's he cashed in his money in the bank to have a Hell in the Cell match against Roman Reigns. Where there's no DQ and it ended in no contest. Which makes no sense. It still doesn't make any sense. So, what happens? Acting general manager Brock, Baron Corbin comes out and ins insists that Braun Strowman will get his opportunity against Roman Reigns, but it'll be in a triple threat match at the next pay-per-view at in Saudi Arabia called Crown Jewel, where it will be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns versus Braun Strowman for the Universal Title. Heyman arrives and he he pretty much brings the broken door out with him. And he goes, Brock Lesnar is happy to take this opportunity to get his title back before UFC. And, you know, Crown Jewel. I think mean, Baron Corbin says, by the way, Roman, you're going to have a title defense against me. So it makes no sense that Baron Corbin announces a big match and then goes, oh, by the way, you're fighting me tonight for the title. Weird. But... It was a fine opening. It wasn't anything special. Just for me, it just feels... You build up the segment about Saudi Arabia, which we already know, it's just for Brock Lesnar to get a paycheck. That's the only reason he's been added to the triple threat. But it just... it just, Yeah. I've got to give it a... I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10 because the promos were good. This match of the night was a really good match it was Dean Ambrose versus Drew McIntyre and this match for me was the best thing on Raw for match ability reason is we had Drew who didn't have Dolph in his corner and we didn't have Seth in Dean's corner it was pretty much a one-on-one -on -one match and there is chemistry there both men definitely could have a singles match against each other and I'd love to see it properly done uh, Dean came in with this plan he's going to work on Drew's leg and that's what he did throughout the whole match he was working on Drew's leg trying to get submission holes hitting it everything just to have that advantage and this is very much unlike the Dean Ambrose we've seen in the past where Dean usually is very crazy in his techniques and he doesn't really think anything out but this time he came out with a game plan and it really did work for him uh, unfortunately for Dean Ambrose, it, it took too many. He tried too many risks, and Drew McIntyre really took advantage of this, uh, using the Claymore to finish him off, which which give the you know the Scottish Terminator the advantage he really needs to get the the victory. Uh, after the match, we did see a backstage segment where Dolph did well, you know, congrats. Uh, his tag team partner on a good victory and pretty much he was convinced to invoke his intercontinental um, rematch because apparently Seth Rollins wasn't there that night. Uh, this was all really good match. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, there's nothing really too bad to take away from it. Uh, it, it just... Again, a really good match, so I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. Next up, we got a singles match where we saw Chad Gable versus Victor from the Ascension. And, oh, God, what is that? I do not understand what WWE are doing with 
this feud. Um, it just makes no sense. We already know, as a WWE Universe, I think we, we're kind of one of those fan bases where we kind of feel like we know what's going to happen beforehand. And we know the Bobby Roode, Chad Gable tag team really isn't going to last that long. It's already obvious on how it's been presented. But using the Ascension as jobbers just feels unrealistic. It's just like, what's going on here? I like the Ascension. I think they could be a really good tag team. But they've been written poorly for years now. And now it just feels even worse now that they're on Raw. And now they're just used to push talent. Which aren't even going to be a tag team for that much longer. Chad Gable is an in-ring talent. He is really good in the ring. And he could have really good matches. But he doesn't need these type of squash matches. Especially against guys like... Victor, who is a good wrestler himself, but just needs opportunities. For me, I, I just felt like this was a very quick match, very much nothing interested in it, and it's just no need for it. So I'm gonna give this, I'm gonna give this a four out of 10. Next up, we had the dead man return, The Undertaker, and he had some big announcements for us for the Super Showdown, and that was his brother Kane will be in his corner at Super Soda. This is awesome. The Brothers of Destruction. Why? Can't they, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, guys. I would rather see a tag team match at this point where it's not where we saw the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and Undertaker taking on Shawn Michaels and Triple H. You know, DX versus the. Who wouldn't want to see that? I really thought that would probably be a better match right now than seeing Undertaker first. Because let's be honest, The Undertaker is really showing he is past his prime. It's just, it's one of those matches. It's a great match. I'm not saying it's not great. It's just, it was fine. This promo itself, The Undertaker's never been the best promo guy. And I, I think even he can admit it. But he really saw it and he felt the character he plays is always 100% awesome um, for me you just just announced that HBK is going to be in Triple H's corner as well really does work out I, it's make it's made the this match feel a little bit more exciting because you don't know what's going to happen between Kane and Shawn Michaels outside the ring hope something will happen but it was a fine segment I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10 next up we had uh, Dana Brooks taking on Bailey in singles match. We did have Sasha Banks in Bailey's corner. Of course they do. It's the hug and boss connection. Of course they're going to be around. Um, this was, a, a, I'm not going to lie, it was a quick match. It really didn't do all. Uh, I understand the story they're trying to do with Dana Brooks. It's she's left Titus Worldwide to come, you know, focus 110 percent on her singles. But matches like this doesn't really do all for both Bailey and. Dana Brooks, she needs squash matches. I think Dana Brooks needs local talents to, to really get her some momentum because this is not going to do all right. Really. It, it was a nothing match and it felt like a nothing match all the time you were watching it. It just, you know, it just doesn't make Dana look any stronger. It doesn't look, make Bailey look any stronger. It just doesn't do anything for both competitors. With that in mind, I can't give this a four out of ten. It's just. Again, WWE just felt like they were rushing matches because they needed matches and they just have no plans for the talent they have in ring. Next up we had the Authors of Pain aka AOP now as they're going by completely uh, taking on local talent and they squashed them. It was nothing. It, again, another nothing match. Very quickly done. WWE, I understand what they're doing. Obviously, they have to restart AOP now. They have Drew, you know, Ma they have Maverick as their manager. But Drake Maverick is awesome. But AOP have destroyed properties in the past, like Titus Worldwide. So it just doesn't make sense that they have to go back to squashing jobbers to, to get themselves feel like a threat. They don't need to do this. So it was a quick match. They destroyed them in no time. You know, Drake Maverick is awesome. So I'm gonna give this another four out of ten. Very rushed. Raw just felt very rushed all week. 
this week. Next up, we did get the Intercontinental Championship match between Dolph Ziggler and Seth freaking Rollins. This did happen because Seth did turn up. He did compete. Um, this didn't really live up to the other matches between Dolph and Seth because, let's be honest, it's they've had a lot of matches. They've just had the Hell in the Cell where they, they had the tag team match then they got involved in Roman's match and they both fell onto a table from the Hell in the Cell. It, it just, again, it's one of those matches where it didn't... It, it, they need to split these two up from having an Intercontinental match because they need some time away from each other. It was a good match. I'm not going to say it wasn't a good match. This felt really, really put well put. You know, story-wise, well put together. Just, just I, I've seen it now. We've seen it so many times now. But I think the fans are going, yeah, it's going to always be a solid match, but we want something different. We want Seth to have another challenger for the Intercontinental Championship. Kevin Owens, um, but let's be honest, it was fine, it did what it needed to do, it moves on the story between, it finally gets Dolph off the Instagram and now championship, because he doesn't have a rematch, thank god, so I'm going to give this, I'm going to give this a solid 7 out of 10, because it's still a good match, it just wasn't as good as what we previously got on Raw between the two. Next up, we had Ronda Rousey have a open challenge, yeah, uh, Ronda Rousey, Backstage asked the uh, Natalia and the Bella twins, how do you do an open challenge? They pretty much explained, look, the guys don't say anything. They just go out, call out an open challenge, and someone comes out and challenges them. Ronda Kett did the exact same thing. She she cut a promo, said Alexa Bliss had a fantastic match, and, you know, they really saw the match at Hell in a Cell, and then she offered an open challenge to any woman in the back. And... Natalia's music hit and this was really cool because you could see Ronda really excited she's taking on her friend in WWE and Natalia's taking quite a while next thing we know the Riot Squad come out dragging Natalia's body uh, they come down to the ring to beat up on Ronda Rousey because they don't hate they don't like Ronda they don't not like Ronda they just don't care about her and they're here to start a riot uh, Ruby Wright said she's going to be the one. Ronda was peeved off, took out uh, Ruby Wright before she got in the ring. So the match never really started. The rest of the Wright squad tried to get involved. Then the Bella Twins got involved. This really, for me, were, could have been a very successful segment for the Wright squad. And it just, again, this just shows WWE writing not. I'm saying on Raw really is struggling right now with this because you had the right squad who had an opportunity to look really strong and maybe hurt Ronda Rousey, um, but no, they wanted Ronda to look strong. Uh, Ronda took out the right squad. The right squad finally started using the numbers game against her. Uh, then the Bella Twins came out and then they took out the right squad and the right squad whimpered off. But two things happened here. The baby faces won very, really easily in this segment. And two, not one of them seemed too concerned about how Natalia was after the you know after the segment. It was just, oh yeah, we protected Ronda and that was it. For me, it's a wasted opportunity for the Riot Squad, but the segment had a lot of potential. So I'm gonna give this a I'm gonna give this a six out of ten. So we had Bobby Lashley versus Elias and Bobby Lashley was accompanied to the ring with his new manager Leo Rush from 205. You might remember the guy he had that bit of a Twitter thing with uh, Emma. Yeah you might remember him he's a bit of a prick. Um, yeah so he is now the new manager of Bobby Lashley which I, for me personally think this is actually a good idea because Bobby Lashley isn't the best uh, promo guy and Leo Rush is actually quite good on the mic so to be honest and he's really good with it he's a high he, he can do a lot of things which is a quite impressive you know high flying moves so this could be a really good partnership um, the match itself again this is this is a problem with Raw in particular right now it's rushed it has three hours and it still feels like every single match was rushed this week uh to show highlights of hell in a cell uh that was the main problem for me um yeah elias 
and Bobby really didn't get started, which is a shame. Both men, uh, Kevin Owens came out because Leo Rush did disrespect him on the mic. Kevin Owens chased him around. Uh, Leo did some really good high flying moves to dodge both uh, Elias and Kevin Owens. Then he kicked Elias, which ended the match in non DQ. Kevin Owens and Elias finally got the hand, but Bobby Lashley managed to drag him away and take out both men from hurting his new manager. Uh, yeah, it did exactly what he needed to do. He definitely uh, pinpointed the relationship that Leo Rush is now definitely Bobby Lashley's manager and they are friends. And Kevin Owens and Elias are after this kid now. What can I say? It, it was alright. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 10. It could have been a really good match. But it just really, again, felt rushed from WWE Creative. Next up, we had a women's tag team match where we saw Alicia Fox and Mickey James taking on Ember Moon and a mystery partner. And her mystery partner was... It was Nia Jax. Big pop for Nia Jax returning. She hasn't been on TV for some time. And it was a bland tag team match. And it did exactly what it needed to do. This match, again... I keep saying this through this video, it just felt rushed. It felt rushed. Um, very, very simple match. Uh, Ember Moon was pretty much the baby face in this whole match where uh, Mickey James and Alicia Fox kept her to one side of a ring. Uh, she managed to finally break away from that. Tags in her ta partner, Nia Jax. Smash, smash, smash. Samoa drop. One, two, three. They get the victory. Very, very simple type of match. Uh, bigger reception for Nia Jax's uh, return. Uh, obviously, Ember Moon coming home, getting a hometown victory. Very rare on WWE TV, which was nice to see. Uh, and they, it just, it was like a Mean Girls thing with with Alicia Fox, Mickey James, and Alexa Bliss. They all feel like Mean Girls characters as heels and I don't know how why they keep doing this with the women's division especially the heels they don't know how to market them properly apart from uh, Becky Lynch feels like the only legitimate heel champion heel who is actually really good and well written uh, so I'm gonna give this a simple 5 out of 10 you're not missing out if you do not watch this match but not least the main event Baron Corbin taking on the big dog himself, Roman Reigns, for the Universal title. God, this match was bad. Um, yeah, so we thought the Hell in the Cell main event was a complete and utter mess. This was a also a complete and utter mess main event. Um, Baron Corbin really, really tried to work this as... as um, Everyone keeps saying it's like having a money in the bank suitcase kind of advantage. He knows how badly banged up Roman is and he's taking advantage of this. Uh, but it really didn't feel like... Baron Corbin never at one point felt like he was going to be a threat. Yes, he tried to do a few quick pins, but that never really got... Roman finally took advantage and got the momentum back on himself. Baron Corbin got out of the ring, threw a chair at him, ended the match in DQ... Baron restarted the match as a non-DQ match because obviously he's acting GM. Then that's when it all got messy. We had Braun Strowman come out at that point, help, taking out Roman Reigns because Roman used the chair because Baron tried to use the chair. Roman took him out with a Superman punch. Braun came out, tried to stop him. Couldn't get involved because Roman dodged out of the way. He got injured. Dolph Ziggler and Drew McIntyre then came out. That meant that Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins got involved. Taking out Braun, Dolph and Drew with uh, suicide jumps outside the ring. S Spear to Baron Corbin. Roman wins. It was just a mess of them. And this is just showing what's going on with the Shield being involved with a lot. Having to have the Shield involved in a lot of rivalries at the same time is costing the main events like this because it's just getting messy. Roman's last matches have been interfered with twice now on Hell in a Cell and now in this. It's just, it's the fans are going, well, yeah, okay, he is defending the title more than Brock Lesnar. That's not hard. But it's just making the matches feel more and more 
complicated to watch and keep up with who's getting taken out, why is that person being taken out, what's going on here, it just felt like it. With that in mind, it was still slightly entertaining and good to see the S.H.I.E.L.D. brothers working together in my opinion, so I'm going to give this a solid 6 out of 10. And there you go guys, that was Raw for this week, what did I think? I thought it was very, very rushed like I keep saying in this review. Uh, no match really felt like it was outstanding apart from the Dean Ambrose and McIntyre match, that was definitely the match of the night and no surprise it was um, but yeah everything else just felt like an utter mess or bland or rushed it just nothing really came together in my opinion so with that in mind I'm definitely giving Raw a I'm being generous I'm gonna give it a 6 out of 10 uh, but what did you guys think of Raw this week leave it in the comments below if you do like our videos please like subscribe and press the notification so you can keep up to date with all our videos here at Smack Talk Wrestling. And if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can do it. It's at Smack Talk Wrestling YouTube. It's and if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at Boise88. And I'll see you guys next time on SmackDown Review. This is two down. One more re review to go, guys. One more. <laughs>